I think our disagreement last time was uh, I I'd talked about this and like and I said like letting kids go for sleepovers and spend more time with other kids and unsupervised. And then you said I think you said something like mm, no I'm, I'm not letting my kid go to sleepovers because I don't trust the other families. Does that sound familiar to you? I don't believe that's what I said. I think our concern was with people wandering around with kids being free to walk home in cities. Yes, you had that also. You, yeah. we, we did talk about sleepovers. My we kids also have sleepovers. Talk. Okay. They've always had sleepovers. Okay. If you know the parents and you trust the parents, it's a great yeah. way to give the kids independence okay. and have them interact with Good. other Good. people. Yes. Yeah. So tell me, that. But what was your policy with your kids, with your younger, with, uh, with all three, on um, when you let them out, like they could go out the door, get on a bicycle, walk seven blocks to a friend's house without any adult with them? What, well, do you remember what age or grade? No, I don't. I mean, it's fine if you live in a good neighborhood. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is if you're, if you know, Childhood predators are real. Not really, not anymore. What I mean is- What do you mean? Well, when you and I were growing up, there were childhood predators out there in the physical world approaching children. And I think you said there, you told the story about one who approached you when you were doing mm -hmm. magic tricks. Um, so there were child predators out there. That's true. They're all on Instagram now. Yeah. The kids aren't out. And Instagram, and uh, especially Instagram, uh, makes it super easy for them to get in touch with, with children. Yeah. So, the phys so this is my point. I can summarize the whole book with a single sentence. We have overprotected our kids in the real world and underprotected them online. I would agree to that. So, the, you know, yes, child predators are terrible, but guess what? We actually locked up most of them. You know, when you and I were growing up, they weren't all locked up. They were just eccentrics who were exposing themselves. Remember flashing, flashers? Mm. That, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. Because if you do that now, you're going to jail for a long, long time. So we actually locked up most of the predators. And they know, don't approach kids on a playground, approach them on social media. I don't know if we are doing that. And there's this new oh, no, push. They go, oh, yeah. No, once you're, once you're identified as a sex offender, you'll never, you know, you are gone for a long time. And then there's sex offender. No, we've really done a lot since the 90s to change the, re change to make the, the real world safer. But there is push against that. You, you're aware of this term minor attracted persons mm. that's being pushed. Disgusting. Disgusting and disgusting. freaky. Yeah. It's such a bizarre yeah. term that I, I got to imagine is only being done by people who don't have children. And they're, they're pushing this thing that it's an identity yeah. and that it's not the fault of the person who has this issue. Yeah. That's How, right. where's, what's the root of that? Have you yeah. investigated that? Yes. I, not that specific issue, but I can, I can you know, from, so look, I, I study moral psychology. That's my academic discipline. Uh, and I study the roots of it evolutionarily, historically, and child development. What is our moral sense? And there are different moralities, and in some ways that's good, and you know, left and right push against each other. Um, so I'm very open to different moralities. But when, when a group makes something sacred, and they say this is the most important thing, and nothing else matters other than this, then they can kind of go insane, and they kind of lose touch with reality. And I think, you know, again, I don't know the history of this particular movement, that, that horrible term, um, but there is a certain kind of morality which is all about, you know, oppression and victimhood. And once you, uh, you know, someone, I guess somewhere said, oh, you know, men who are attracted to boys or, you know, little girls are being, uh, you know, are, are victims, of, I, I don't know what. Some, some in some little eddy of weird morality, someone put that forward as a new victim class. Yeah. Because you know we've been you know we've been trying to address victimhood all over the place. It, once someone puts that up as a new victim class, and you have to do that, you have to change the terms. This is very Orwellian. You change the terms, and then some others who share this morality, which is focused on um, on not making anyone feel marginalized, you know, not allowing any labels that will slander someone or make them look bad. I think you know. I think. People who approach children for sexual goals, I am very happy to have them slandered and labeled and uh, and separated. Um, but I, you know, I, I suspect that some people, once they lock this in as a group that's being marginalized, they say, "Well, we have to, we have to defend them," and we don't think about what the hell we're actually saying. It, it seems purely an academic thing. It seems that this is something that, it, with people that only exist. In sort of an academic space where they, it's almost like an intellectual exercise in understanding yeah. oppression. Mm -hmm. That's that, not, it's, you can't apply it in the real world. 